Amen. Amen. All right, let's everyone settle down now, please. Uh, open your Bible to the oldest book in the world. How many of y'all know what that is? The book of Job, you're right. Uh, the book of Job, as far as we know, is the oldest piece of literature on planet Earth. Some would argue with that, but they have not done their homework. Uh, Job chapter 42, the last chapter of the book of Job. I didn't say it happened first, I said it was wrote first. Uh, Genesis wasn't wrote till way later on uh, and when Moses came along. Job chapter number 42. Job 42. If you know the story of Job, he started out good, had some really bad problems, but wound up better. And uh, that's what trouble's supposed to do to you. Trouble will make you bitter or it'll make you better, depending on how you react to it. You are not responsible for other people's actions. You're responsible for your reaction. And Job had been through a lot of trouble here. And look what God done for him. And listen, if you listen to me, it'll help you. I want to preach on an unusual subject this morning. I have never heard a message on that. Probably would, there is some, I'm sure. But uh, on this word today. I've never heard anybody preach this on this. And it came to my heart the other day. Look at Job 42, verse number 7. Job 42, verse number 7. And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends. For ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job hath. Therefore, take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams and go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Job shall pray for you. For him, y'all listening? For him will I accept. Lest I deal with you after your folly in that which ye have not spoken of me, the thing which is right, like my servant Job. So Eliphaz, the Temanite, and Bildad, the Shuhite, shortest man in the Bible, and Zophar, the Namathite, went and did according as the Lord commanded them. The Lord also accepted Job. I want to use a current phrase that's real popular out in the world this morning and give you the Bible look on it and take on it. And that is this. How can I be accepted? How can I be accepted? The Bible said the Lord accepted Job. Isn't that all you hear nowadays out there in the world? It's a big deal out there in the world. Everybody wants to be accepted. Everybody here, I'm not accepted. I'm not accepted there. I'm not accepted here with this, with that. Uh, I'm going to talk about that a little while this morning. And it's, on my, it's been on my mind for a couple of weeks as usual, the Bible is way ahead of the world and has the absolute infallible teaching on the subject like it does every other subject. Now, I want to say two or three things about this this morning. The first thing I want to say is, number one, everybody wants to be accepted. Whether you admit it or not, we want people to accept us, right? We want, we want people to like us and in, in other way of saying it. Um, the big thing now is uh, this group wants acceptance. That group wants acceptance. If you come from another country or another religion or another lifestyle, or something, you say, I don't feel accepted. I don't feel accepted. It's everywhere you go. Uh, I went over there and I didn't feel accepted. I went to this church and they didn't accept me. I went to work at this place and they didn't accept me. Everybody wants to be accepted. It's normal. It's natural. I mean, uh, good night. I mean, you, you, all, you can say all day long, I don't care if anybody likes me or not. But the truth is, we all want to, people to like us and to be accepted. Now, I, really, nothing wrong with that. The problem is this. Uh, one of the things that gets a lot of people in trouble 
is this need and desire to be accepted by their peers. Or young people get in trouble. A lot of boys drive real fast and take chances so that other guys will like him or think he's cool. So they'll accept him into the cool group at school. A lot of times, a young lady will do things that she's been taught wrong or become sexually active or immoral because she wants the group, cheerleaders or football players or people to include her in the group. A lot of times, uh, girls will, will go on a diet and spend all their money on their hair and on their nails and on their, uh, uh, their face and, and everything else uh, because they think if, if I look a certain way, if I dress a certain way, people buy tennis shoes. People, people buy tennis shoes that cost an unbelievable amount of money uh, to tennis shoes, you know, so people will accept them. They'll think, yeah, man, you're cool too. You're, you can be like us. Or buy expensive clothes or cars, or grown people, even houses, or live, if I live in a certain community, I'll be accepted like everybody else. Everybody will like me. It's a, it's a natural need that we have. It's expensive jewelry and all kinds of things. Movie stars starve their self to death to be skinny enough to, to play a role in a movie where, uh, so they'll think, I'll go to the Hollywood, the Grammys, the Emmys, and, and people will think that I look like them and, and, and I'll be accepted. Everybody wants to be accepted. It's a fact. Number two, everybody is sometimes rejected. Everybody. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me this morning? The perfect example of that in the Bible is Joseph. Joseph was a man, young man who grew up. He had all them brothers, uh, his, his brothers made, the, made up the 12 tribes of Israel. And Joseph came to them one day and Joseph said, he said, y'all, he said, I've been having some of the strangest dreams that I've ever, that I've ever thought of having. They said, what is it? And he told them about, you know, about the corn and the corn bowed down, his, the 11 corn and, and the sun and the moon. And that was a picture of uh, mom and daddy, that sun and moon. And he, those, those uh, uh, 11 ears were a picture of the, his um, uh, brothers and or, or the, the seven fat cow, the skinny cow, some of them dreams he had. I forgot what, who all had them. But anyway, he had these dreams and he dreamed that the sun, the moon, the stars bowed down to him. And they said, whoa, boy, uh-uh, this ain't gonna happen. And they took Joseph, their brother, and put him in a pit and sold him into slavery and became uh, one of the most amazing stories in the Old Testament. Now, how do you think Joseph felt? There's all the 11 of them over there having birthday parties and I'm the reject. I'm the reject. I'm the reject of the family. Don't raise your hand, but have you ever felt like the reject of the family? I mean, I guess a lot of us have. If you've never felt that feeling, you're going to one day on, on something. I'm, I mean, it just happens. Uh, uh, you're not the first person to ever be rejected. i tell you what, uh, uh, rejection is a part of life. Joseph is a picture of Jesus Christ, and the Bible said Jesus was rejected. The Bible said in Isaiah 53 and verse 3, listen to this, about Jesus Christ, he was despised, and rejected of men. He was despised and rejected of men. There wasn't nothing wrong with him. Don't you think, well, there must be something wrong with me. Nobody, there wasn't nothing wrong with Jesus. And they rejected him. They rejected him. That helps me. Everybody is rejected sometime. Now, we all, I know what, I know what it's like to feel a, a little bit of rejection. I know what it's like to be laughed at. I know what it's like uh, to walk into a restaurant. Me and my, my girls used to walk, uh, when they were younger, we'd walk into a restaurant, any restaurant in town, and I would see the heads turn, and I would see the whispers. One, one lady made a very rude comment right when I walked by, loud enough so I could hear it. And I mean, it hurt. And they, I, I know what it's like to, to walk into a, a, a place and, and people just look down, there he is. I know what that's like, that's a little bit, that ain't, that ain't nothing. That's nothing. I know what it's like to go to a preacher's meeting, and I am one, and feel cold shoulder number five, brother. I mean, just uh, very, but you know what? I, I'm a grown man. I'll get over it. Uh, that's, that's not going to kill you uh, to feel a little bit of rejection. Everybody is sometimes rejected. The Bible said even the Lord was rejected of men. 
And then there's that story of Cain in Genesis chapter 4. Cain and Abel. And, and Cain brought uh, the, of the, the blood of the animal. Abel brought, or, I'm sorry, Abel brought the blood of the animal. Cain brought the fruit of the ground. And the Bible said God accepted Abel and rejected Cain. And Cain got mad and said, this isn't fair. I made an offering. He made an offering. Why'd you accept him and not me? And you know what the Lord told him? He said, if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? Now that's God talking to Cain, but that's a thought, you know it. You know why a lot of people ain't accepted? They won't do right. You can't expect people to accept you doing wrong. He said, well, Cain said, well, I'm not accepted. And the Lord said, if you do well, you'll be accepted. I ain't playing favorites. I'm not picking Abel over you. He brought the right offering. You didn't. If you, brought, if you do well, you'll be accepted. If you don't, you won't. And ladies and gentlemen, he found out everybody is sometimes rejected. Number three, number three, let me say this quickly this morning. You will never, are you listening? You will never be accepted by everybody. It ain't going to happen. Nobody ever is, nobody ever has been, or ever will be. You will drive yourself crazy trying to please everybody, do everything that everybody thinks. I'll never forget when I first got saved, and I got called to preach. I was so hungry. I was so starving. I wanted to do everything God wanted me to do. I wanted to be in there. And I'd go to a camp meeting, and there'd be an old seasoned man of God get up, and he'd say, if you're going to be a preacher, you need to pray uh, two hours a day. I said, all right, I'm going to pray two hours a day. I'd go hear another seasoned preacher. He'd get up, and he'd say, uh, uh, if you're going to be a man of God, then you're going to have to read uh, 20 chapters in your Bible a day. I said, all right, I'm going to read 20 chapters of the Bible a day. I'd go hear another man of God, and he'd say, if you're going to be a man, of a preacher, then you're going to have to uh, to work like everybody else and do stuff around the house. And do that. I said, all right, I'm going to work and do stuff around the house and work a job. And he said, another one said, if you're going to be a man of God, you need to spend evenings with your wife and family. I said, all right, I'll spend evenings with my wife and family. And then another preacher got up, and he said, if you're going to be a man of God, uh, you need to fast. And I tried that. And and another man said, if you're going to be a man of God, you're going to have to visit so many days. I said, I'm going to do that. And, and one day I got to looking around and I thought, I can't eat. I can't sleep. There ain't enough hours in the day to do everything all these preachers tell me I'm supposed to do. And I found, I'd, I'd like to kill myself. And I go in there and they say, well, you should act a certain way. You should dress a certain way. You should do a certain way. And if you do that, people say, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. You know what I found out a long time ago? You cannot please everyone. Everybody, everybody's not going to accept you. You're not going to fit into everybody's mold. Brother, you, it just ain't going to happen. Get that through your head. Now, if you're like me, I have some, a built-in nature to want to please people. It's in my nature. I got my mom's like that. Mom could not stand the thoughts of disappointing somebody. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing to have, but you can only let that go so far in you, you'll drive yourself crazy. You cannot go everywhere, do everything. You can't, I couldn't preach every night and say home pray. I said, I'm gonna pray so many times every night. Then I'd preach a revival. I'd get home at 11.30 at night. I'd be so sleepy, I couldn't pray an hour. And I thought, Lord, what am I doing? And I thought, I can't do everything that everybody expects me to do. It's, it's impossible. Now, I, I reluctantly say that because some of you say, oh boy, I don't have to do nothing. Uh, you're taking advantage of it. You're definitely taking advantage. That's not what I'm saying. The Bible said in Romans 15, 31, Paul said, I want my service to be accepted of the saints. He said, I want the saints to accept my ministry. Romans 12 and verse 1. He said, we present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. So I, I, I tell you, you have, to learn how to, you have to learn how to remember that you want to be accepted. Everybody is not always going to accept you. Get that through your head. You're not going to please them all. 
And that brings me to my fourth point. And this is where I spend my time and we'll take a few minutes doing that. When all is said and done, when all the chips are in, when the wind's blown and the rains fell and the problems are done and gone, all that really matters is if God is accepting you. Brother, if I know my creator has accepted me, I'm telling you, thank God, I can lay down and go to sleep tonight and know everything's all right. Are you listening? Now, God put this on my heart to tell somebody this morning. Somebody here needs to hear this. Somebody here needs to hear this. Listen, brother, I made up my mind. I'll do my best to please you. My job, you know what, a minister, a minister is a servant. I'm, I'm to serve you. I'm not a dictator. I'm not a boss. I'm a servant of this church. I'm the only one up here sweating. Uh, and the rest of y'all sitting there in the cool. Uh, telling you, I'm a servant, and my job is to serve you. If you need me, I'll try to be there. If you need me at the hospital, I'll try to be there there. If you need me at the funeral home, I'll try to be there. If you need me to pray, I'll try to pray. If you'll need me to help you, I'm, I'm helping move furniture. Lord, have mercy. Done plumbing work. I didn't know what I was doing. i uh, done everything in the world. I'll try. But when it comes right down to it, when it comes right down to it, if I can lay down at night and say, dear God, I've tried my best to serve you. I want to be accepted by you. That's what matters. And I'm going to tell you something else this morning. The most important thing in your life, don't ever forget this, the most important thing in your life is you and God being right. right. Are you listening? You and God. It don't matter what else. You can get up here and sing. You can play. You can preach. You can give out tracts. You know, all of that's wonderful and great. But the most important thing in the world is your heart being right with God. It's in vain, you're wasting your time if you're not accepted of the Lord. Now, how are we gonna get accepted by God? You, you might be here this morning and say, I just don't, I don't know if the creator, I know he ain't. I know he ain't pleased with me, preacher. How am I gonna be accepted? Here we go, here I'm gonna tell you. Let's take your Bibles and turn to Ephesians chapter one. Let me show you a verse of scripture here that helped me on this. Ephesians, there, the apostles uh, to the Gentiles, the apostle Paul, the apostle that God gave the revelation of the body of Christ, the church, the Gentile preacher, uh, said this in Ephesians chapter number one. Remember, this is right into the body of Christ, a Christian in the Lord. Look at this, great verse of scripture. Verse number six, Ephesians 1, six. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Let me tell you something, people. I am accepted to God because I am in Jesus Christ. Listen to me. You've heard the old saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know. That's true. You ever heard the old saying, I, I I remember years ago we'd take groups of people up to West Virginia. And y'all have heard about our trips to West Virginia and my family up there on my dad's side of the family up there in a little town called Kermit. And my cousin is uh, uh, Linda Gale Priest Sarton. And many, some of y'all know Linda Gale and, and uh, uh, their family and all the, the big family, 13 brothers and sisters. And we took a big crowd up there, had a couple of revivals. And I remember we took all these people with us and my cousin, she's one of these types of people that just goes all out when there's company coming. They live in that little bitty town. The whole town ain't even as long as from here to out there at the end of, end of our road there. And it's about not even, maybe, maybe a half a mile from one end of the town to the other. There's 11 bars in that town. <laughs> Every other building, Western Auto Bar, uh, Post Office Bar. And, uh, and it used to be like a little Las Vegas with people coming over from Kentucky in there on Friday night uh, to get drunk and fight and gamble and mess around. And uh, she, so she, she just goes all out when there's company coming. She's still like that. And I remember taking a bunch of people up there and I said, now you go this way and go this way and go this way and go that way and go this way. And they got there. And then I got to them and they said, Brother Danny, you wouldn't believe how nice these people's been to us. They, they don't even know us from Adam. And you know what I told them? I said, stick with me, you'll go places. You know that old saying? <laughs> I said, stick with me. And really, I was just kidding with them. But you know what I meant? I meant my family didn't know them. Do you know why they made them welcome? 
because they know me. Lord have mercy, hallelujah. I'm gonna tell you a story this morning. Everybody listen to the story. I read where this preacher told this and I'm telling you, it, it'll work in your life if you'll let it. I told them, I said, my cousins will be good to you. Call them, told them, they're coming. When they come in, they laid out the red carpet, didn't know them, madam. You say, oh, are you Danny's people? Come on in. They let them in because of me. Let me tell you a story, y'all. Listen to the story. There's a preacher who was the chaplain for one of the NBA team, the basket, basket, professional basketball. Because he was the chaplain of the team, he had VIP uh, privileges on everything. I don't know what all a chaplain of a team does. I don't even know if they all have them, but he is and was. And he'd go and pray with them or if one of them having a problem or needed counseling or help them, he would, he would help them out and stuff like that. Well, uh, he said this. He said they would give him a bunch of tickets to take to the ball games and he could literally take anybody he wanted to. So he'd talk to his friends and he'd say, do you want to go to one of the games? And they said, sure. He said, now you got to listen to me now. I'll get you in. I'll get you in. I got the tickets. I'll get you in. So he said this. He told him, he told me, he started out, and he say, I've got the tickets. You're invited to go. You can't just go in there and sit down on your own. You've got to go in with me. If you just go to the front door and say, I want in, they're not going to let you. You got to go in with me. You got that? Not only that, he said, I'll come by and pick you up and you can ride with me over to the arena because I got special parking privileges. I don't have to park way out yonder a half a mile across the football field and then walk to the stadium. He said, we have a special VIP parking lot. I drive around under the, like a tunnel and I come up just 25 feet from the door. All you gotta do is be ready. You'll ride to the game with me. Not only that, he said, after we get there, the attendant will open the door for us and take my car and park it. They'll let you in. Not because of who you are, but because of who I am. He said, they'll let you in. Not because you paid, but because you're with me. Lord have mercy. He said, I'll tell them that you're with me. They don't know you, but they know me. He said, we'll go down to the main door. He said, if you're with me, you're going into the main door too. He said, you're, I, I'm not gonna go in like one of them doors where you have to walk up on them ramps, stand behind 35,000 people uh, trying to get in there. He said, we got a special door we go in where the VIP, like Michael Jordan, Charles Barkley, some of them, they could just go right in there and get the best seat. He said, we're gonna go right in that special door. You come on. They don't know you, but they know me. And you're gonna get in not because of who you are, but because of who I am. I'm gonna shout before I finish telling this story. I'm telling you, hallelujah, glory to God. He said, we'll go in there. He said, we don't get the cheap seats. He said, no, you're not gonna be up in the nosebleed section. No, sir, we got ringside right behind the players and the coaches. He said, you're gonna get to sit there. They don't know you, but they know me. As long as they know you're with me, you get in. You get all these privileges because you're me. Ain't because of who you are. Ain't because of what you've done. Ain't because of how much you've paid, but because of who you're with. Hallelujah, glory to God. I'm glad, hallelujah, that I'm with him. Buddy, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. When I go to the judgment, I'm gonna say, I'm with him. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm with him. And the Lord will say, come on, you get special privileges. He said, not only that. He said, are you hungry? Well, yeah. There's a four-course meal being served. He said, the absolute steak, Philip Mignon, Pirch. That's what them old people up in Burns will call it. The Pierce platter uh, said, uh, "They're they're they're gonna they're gonna serve us four course meal, and you're gonna get to eat it because of who you're with. You're with me." 
I'm telling you, he said, you eat that meal, it's free. You don't have to pay for it. He said, a policeman will let you in the door. He said, I'll tell them you're with me. You get accepted because of me. He said, then we're going to get on a private elevator. He said, when we get on that private elevator, that thing's going to take us up. And he said, you get to ride on that elevator going up because of who I am, not because of who you are, but because of who I am, and I'm going up with him. He said, are you hungry? Plenty of food. Best seats in the house. And then when, it's, when the game's over, you're going to get escorted out home safe. I said, home safe. That's why I said it's not what you know, it's who you know. They didn't get in there, you're not going to get in there and, and say, uh, well, I know all the statistics of the NBA and who won the championship for the last 30 years. Nope, nope. You get in, he said, because you're with me. Because you're with me. When I was 18 years old, I took Jesus Christ as my Savior. Right then, God accepted me. I understand where our difference in state and standing. Our life does make a difference. I understand God deals with us on a personal level and state of our lives. But, brother, my standing in Jesus Christ, my life is hid with Christ in God. So when he sees me, he don't see me like I really am. He sees me through his son, so I'm accepted in the beloved. That's good news, people. That's good news. You want to be accepted? Get in Jesus Christ. Stick with him, you'll go places. I'm telling you, the Bible said, ye are complete in him. People say, well, I just don't feel complete. I just don't feel accepted. This world ain't never gonna accept you. If you're good, they don't. If you're bad, they don't. If you're sorry, if you're great, if you're brilliant, somebody ain't gonna like you. Make up your mind this morning, I want him to accept me. Settle it this morning. You know what I'm going to say when I get to the judgment? I'm a him. I ain't no good. I didn't pay for this. I don't deserve it. I'm just a redneck off the street, but I'm a him. That's why you want God to like you, you like his son. You want God to accept you, accept his son. That's why we're always saying accept Christ, accept, what he, accept. That's what we're meaning. He's already done it. You just got to accept it then when you accept that, God accepts you. You want to be accepted? That's how to get accepted. You say, Brother Danny, I just feel like I'm not accepted. No, I'm a weirdo and oh, everywhere I go, where am I? No, you don't have to live like that. You can go home tonight and lay down and say, Glory to God, I've been accepted. I'm accepted in the beloved. I'm accepted in Jesus. I'm accepted in him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I love the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. I love him because I'm accepted through him. What he's done. What he's going to do. When he comes back, I get to go up that big elevator because I'm with him. I get to sit down at the marriage supper of the Lamb because I'm with him. I get to live forever in a beautiful mansion in heaven because of him. Accepted. You want to be accepted this morning? That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. You'll kill yourself trying to be accepted in this world. I gave up on that. I tried it for a while and I killed myself. I still do everything I can try to for people to want, you know, I mean, I take a bath, and, <laughs> you know, and I don't want people to say, oh, I didn't get away. But I'm telling you, that ain't, when I lay down at night, I ain't learning about, did this person like me? Did that person like me? Did the other person like me? I'm laying and say, Lord, whew, I'm with him. And the Lord said, you're in, you're in. I've accepted your works. Let's stand by our head for prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Somebody here this morning, somebody here this morning while every head's bowed and eyes closed.